This past week, three moderately interesting events happened in the landscape of Canadian soccer. A potential D2 National League was revealed to be in the works, the Canadian Championship date was unofficially set, and Tristan Borges, the 2019 CPL MVP, is returning to Forge FC. Now, all three of these topics are interesting and deserve a little talk about, but none of them really require their own video, so I'm going to talk about all three and I'll put timestamps down below as to when each of those three sections start. So, first off, the D2 Canada League. This week, it was sort of announced, sort of leaked that a Division II National Canadian Soccer League is in the works. From what we've heard, this would be a semi-pro league that would be a fully national league but would kind of be separated into regional divisions, so like a West Division and a Central Division and maybe an East Division. And then there would be a championship weekend where the top teams from each division went and played against each other for league champion. Sort of like how the Canadian Hockey League operates with the WHL, OHL, and QMJHL and then them coming together and playing in the Memorial Cup. This league would be independent of the CPL. This seems to be a league that would be populated with teams that don't have the financial strength to join the CPL, but are either playing in areas where there's no league in Ontario, no Quebec Premier League or don't want to participate in one of those two leagues. So teams like the Calgary Foothills or Montreal Manic actually has been linked to it. So kind of second tier teams below the CPL that don't really want to go into the CPL or don't have the money to go into the CPL. Now for the existence of this league, I am slightly hesitant. I'm actually quite hesitant. First off, a second tier league separate from the CPL means promotion and relegation. The dream is pretty much dead unless the CPL creates their own second tier league at some point. Also, this could mean that potential ownership groups that would be interested in joining the CPL might just join the second tier league, in which case it might slow the expansion and growth of the top tier Canadian Premier League. Now, of course, this would be another Canadian wide league, which is good. The more leagues, the more teams you have, the better it is for player development. But I'm not convinced right now with the CPL just being made a thing that a second tier league that brands itself as a second tier league can really fully survive in Canada right now. It is quite uncharted territories. It seems like an interesting idea, but I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of teams joining and then folding and a lot of teams that are just in for a couple seasons and then fold. I feel like the league as a whole is going to be on very uncertain ground, at least to start off with. So it's a great interesting idea, but I'm not quite sure about the long-term survivability of it. I'm not even sure of the short-term viability of it. However, if WSA Winnipeg, Calgary Foothills, Thunder Bay Chill, the Canadian teams that are playing currently in USL Division 2 all join this league, I feel like this is a great place for them to play in their futures. I have a lot more faith in the survivability of the league if those three teams are all starting members of the league and the league kind of builds around them. Just existing teams that obviously wouldn't jump ship from USL to go to a league where there's no real long-term plan there or long-term stability there. So if those three teams go, I have hopes for the survivability of the league, but this is one that's going to be touch and go. So it's going to be really interesting to see how it pans out. I'm interested to see what type of starting season they have if they do in fact start for 2022 next summer. In the end, more professional teams and more professional leagues in Canada can only mean good things. So hopefully this league does start up and can find some success. The second piece of news this week is the 2020 Canadian Championship final finally has a unofficial but kind of set date. March 20th at BMO Field. Now, of course, the 2020 Canadian Championship has been a complete mess from COVID causing the entire format to be remade to the winner of the Canadian MLS ground robin type thing that they did versus the winner of the Canadian Premier League Island Games to then TFC the second the Island Games ended heading down to the US to play in Hartford and then Hamilton going on a tour of Central America during their long CONCACAF league run 
just the time to play the Canadian Championship wasn't found. And now TFC has announced that once the MLS season starts up, they're going to Florida and the CONCACAF Champions League starts in early April. So it is literally now or never. The main problem with this though is that Toronto FC has been training for like three weeks now in their preseason. Hamilton Forge has not started training yet. And not only that, Forge FC doesn't even have permission from the Ontario government as of right now to train, and the final is in two weeks from today when I'm filming this. Now, apparently the Canadian Premier League said that they applied to be given professional team exemption to the Ontario government back in October in the fall, and that they still haven't really gotten that yet. So. I don't really know what's going on there. I mean, I guess that they probably would have thought that their season wasn't starting until May, so they were in no real rush to get it done. But I mean, we knew the Canadian Championship had to happen at some point before the Champions League started. Like, we knew it was coming. So I'm not sure what really is going on there. And also, the Forge right now don't have a full roster. They only have like 15 players signed. Even TFC doesn't really have a full roster right now. They just kind of have who's left from last season, but they haven't signed anyone yet. So we got two teams one of which is in the middle of their preseason, one of which hasn't even started training for their preseason yet, a game in two weeks, and neither team has a fully flushed out roster. Oh, and the Olympic qualifiers are starting literally the day afterwards, so a lot of the U23 Canadian players that play on TFC are likely going to be gone there unless they retain some of them just for the Canadian Championship. Now, with global pandemic and all that, we always knew that this Canadian Championship was going to be a major crapshoot, but I think just the positioning of it right now is as crap shooty as it's going to get. We are going to have two under strength sides going up against each other and it's going to be incredibly interesting. We're going to have team that is under strength but has been training versus team that is under strength but isn't training. But then also Forge has a coach that they've played under for two years and they, they know. And then TFC is a team that is going to be playing their first game under a new coach. And the fact that neither of these teams are going to have preseason games is thrown right into not only a competitive game, but a competitive game with a spot in the CONCACAF Champions League on the line. This is as crap shooty as a game you can get is going to be a complete dumpster fire. It's probably going to be pretty fun. It might be super boring football, but I have a feeling that it's going to be just insane what is going on football like it's gonna be it's gonna be a terrible game to watch but it, it might hit the point of being so terrible that it's good like it'll be like watching the room it's terrible but you'll enjoy it i hope my prediction is tfc is going to come out on top just because they've been training for longer and they have more talent in the roster Forge actually has a chance, but I just feel like with having not played since December and then having not trained as of yet, they're literally going to have now two weeks to train. They're not even allowed to train yet, so they're going to have less than two weeks to train. It's going to be a very, very bad time for Forge, especially that right now they only have 15 players under contract, so in the next two weeks it's going to be, let's grab as many players as we can for Hamilton, I guess. But regardless of how it's happening, regardless of just how bad of a timing it is, we are getting a Canadian Championship Final for 2020. They're not just handing it to Toronto FC, which was a fear that might happen. So. That is a positive. Honestly, the CSA we knew was never going to properly handle this. So I think the fact that we're getting a Canadian Championship game that we can watch that is going to decide who goes to the CONCACAF Champions League is something that we should celebrate and something that we should enjoy. And the third piece of news for this week. Yesterday, Forge FC announced that 2019 league MVP, 2019 league leading scorer, and 2019 young player of the year, and Hamilton Forge's all-time leading scorer, Tristan Borges, is returning for the 2021 season on loan from OH Leuven. Now, Borges, as we all know, was the standout player of the CPL's inaugural season, and then in the offseason, he was transferred to OH Leuven, who at the time were in the Belgian second division. He played four games pre-COVID in the end of the Belgian second division season. And then going into the 2020-2021 season, the OH Leuven was promoted to the first 
Belgian division. Now, also in the summer, OH Leuven got a new manager, and the new manager instantly decided that Tristan Borges was not in his plans. And so, as a result, Borges has not been playing for OH Leuven, has not played a minute for OH Leuven this season, and has now been loaned back to Forge FC. His lack of play time, of course, controversially had him left off the initial 50-man roster for Canada's U23 squad going into this month's Olympic qualifiers. And for him, he just needs another reset. This is a fantastic move for the Forge, adds him to what is already a very strong offense, as which what already is a very strong team in general. And for Tristan Borges, it is restart number two. You can come back to Hamilton, you can put up another season like you did in 2019, you can improve upon that. There's a chance that Borges is better than he was in 2019. It's going to be really interesting if he puts up another MVP caliber season, which we know he's capable of. It's a chance for him to go back to Leuven and be like, look what I just did, you got to give me a chance. Or for when his contract runs out in Leuven, which apparently runs out at the end of their 2021-22 season, or maybe at the end of the summer. It's going to end soon, I'm not sure exactly when, he can move around to another team in Europe. Because we know he wants to be in Europe, and dominating the CPL again is the best way for him to find consistent playtime in Europe. And for the Forge, adding not only another creative piece, but Tristan Borges. That is just the dominant move. Like, the Forge are already looking like a fantastic team this year, but adding Tristan Borges just gives them so much more oomph and gives them a squad that is probably the favorites to win a third straight Canadian Premier League title. So, those are the three big events that happened in Canadian soccer this week. As always, if you like this video, hit like. If you want to see more of my stuff, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Link is down below in the description. And also last week, fellow soccer YouTuber Ryan LFC had me on his channel to talk about how Canada should line up for the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. We had a great little chat about that. His, that video is up on his channel. I'll post the link down below in the description if you want to check that out. It's a great talk and we gave quite a nice little bit of insight onto whether Canada can qualify for the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. So go check that out. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.